So uh, this is a chicken, but you probably worked that out. Um, what we really wanted to do today was be the first people to take a real live chicken to a TED talk. Uh, but unfortunately, the convention center was a little bit worried about what this might mean for their carpets. So uh, we've brought the next best thing. And hopefully, you can tell from its lovely plumage that it's a free range chicken, which means it gets to live in a kind of chicken utopia like this. Now, these chickens, they eat organic, they work where and when they want, and they always nail their deadlines. Unfortunately, there are some chickens who live and work like this. Now, their life is not so nice. They suffer from stress and anxiety. They work incredibly rigid hours, and they quite often end up pecking their colleagues in frustration, like in a lot of workplaces. <laughs> So it was three years ago that I was coming back from work and a guy got his briefcase trapped in the tube door. Now this put me 12 minutes back from the nursery or kindergarten pickup. It's a pound a minute after six at my nursery and so I was sat on one of those tiny primary coloured chairs meant for an infant and told off by the nursery manager for being late again and then I was charged 12 pounds. Now, at this point, I thought, all I need is to start and end my working day 15 minutes earlier. So I put my flexible working request in, and it was denied because there was a fear that it would open the floodgates to others seeking this kind of flexibility. And I just thought, well, why can't we open the floodgates? What's this big fear? So uh, I quit with nothing to go to. <laughs> <laughs> And here we are with a chicken. <laughs> and I became one of the 54,000 women, mothers, in the UK who are pushed out of the workforce for simply pushing out a baby. And it was in that moment of frustration and anger that I came up with Mother Pucker. <laughs> Now, Mother Pucker is essentially, it's a website. It's something that we talk about as a platform for people who happen to be parents. But there's a big part of that that's really for everyone. And that's something that we call Flex Appeal. Uh, it's something that's seen us talk to committees in Whitehall, to national government in the UK, but also give evidence to regional governments too. And also, unfortunately, it has seen us prance around in tightly fitting lycra <laughs> in town centres across Britain. But the purpose of Flex Appeal is really very simple. There are two parts to it. One, encourage people who think they might benefit from flexible working to have the courage to make the request, but also encourage employers, when they get that request, to consider it, to see the benefits, to think about saying yes. Because for too long, flexibility has been one-way traffic towards the employer. So in the UK, we work roughly 38 days unpaid overtime a year. And yet we ask for a hint of flexibility around our lives and we're looked at like some kind of caged chicken asking for a manicure. So that brought us to uh, chicken coop theory. Now, <laughs> you can probably tell that it's fairly straightforward. <laughs> Along the bottom, we have control over your working life. And up the side, we have happiness in your life in general, and that's measured in emojis, from crying on the floor emoji to big smiling emoji with meh as the kind of day-to-day -day average. And here's the theory. <laughs> it's a very substantiated theory. <laughs> here's the theory. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, more control over your working life leads to more happiness in the rest of your life. And in this area, down the bottom, uh, you can see you lead a little bit of a battery, caged hen existence. So here, we're talking about that moment when you get in at 9.01 a.m. in the office, and everyone's huffing at you, and your boss is f f issuing you a formal warning. Uh, you then get to 4.59 p.m. to go and pick up your kid from kindergarten or, or just get home to eat a meal, and you're looked at like a part-timer. You don't care about your job. Some places, extreme places, you have to ask to go to the toilet. 
Now, whatever restrictions are put on your time while you're at work, whether it's a factory or a shop or an office or anywhere else, there's also a lot of frustration down here that comes from the kind of work that you can get access to. And this is something that affects everyone, but it disproportionately affects women, particularly when they become mothers. In the US, for example, it's been shown that for every child a woman has, her lifetime earnings drop by an average of 4%. And we have heard over the three years of running this campaign from hundreds of women who have said to us that they had a kid and then they missed out on promotion opportunities. They had to give up their career job and take lesser paid work, all because their employers weren't willing to show a little bit of flexibility. We also heard from a guy last week who said that he asked his boss if he could leave a little bit earlier to pick up his daughter from school. And his boss said, well, can't your missus do that? Can't your wife do that? And he said, well, when you pay me as much as her boss pays her, then maybe we can talk. Um, <laughs> now, there is an upside to chicken coop theory. Uh, it very quickly gets into a zone where you start to become a little bit more free range and you start to look a little bit more like those utopian chickens from earlier. And it can be pretty simple stuff. It can be knowing that, well, actually, maybe you can leave a little bit earlier in the afternoon if you've got something important to take care of and make the time up in the evening without worrying about getting a formal warning from HR. It could be as straightforward as knowing that, well, you can make that doctor's appointment at the one slot that's available to you without having to give your boss a detailed rundown of your internal workings. Um, because this is the thing, a little bit of flexibility can make quite a big difference. It can make a big difference to the individual in their life, but also to the employer. There are reams of statistics and studies that show that companies that employ a bit more flexible working uh, are more productive, their people stay with them for longer, and it makes them a more attractive place to work in the first place, which is good news for the bottom line and cold, hard cash. Money. <laughs> this is good for business. So at the moment, the UK is losing £10 billion a year due to work-related stress. Now, a good example, a case study, is Pursuit Marketing in Glasgow. They just went down to a four-day working week for everyone, but at the same pay. So people were doing less for the same amount of money. Since 2016, productivity in that company has gone up 30%, and they have doubled turnover. And there are examples like that from all over the world. Another one uh, is Ctrip in China. It's one of the world's biggest websites. It's a travel website. Stanford just did a study on how they work recently, and they found that the people who are allowed to work from home were 13% more productive in exactly the same time as the ones that were forced to trudge into the office every day and shackle themselves to a random bit of laminated MDF. And that's the thing. Um, flexible working isn't just a, a cuddly extra. It's not like a bean bag in reception or a ping pong table in the canteen. It's not a bonus ball. Uh, it's not a nice to have. Uh, and it's not something you earn. It is a fundamental shift in the way that we work, in the very fabric of our working world, a working world that has not been challenged since the Industrial Revolution. So what we're dealing with here is free-range technology. We can work anywhere, matched with caged mentality, which can leave you feeling a little like this guy. Now... <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. How do we not end up looking like that? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you want to know how do we show up? Well, we just do. If you're an employee that thinks you might benefit from more flexible working, well, have the courage to ask, knowing that you're asking for something that's entirely reasonable, that's been proven to benefit businesses. And if you're a boss and you get that request, be open-minded about it. Consider giving it a trial. It could be very simple things like a bit of flexi time. It can be compressed hours. It can be core hours. It works in factories and on shop floors as well. It can be things like job sharing. It can just be being a bit more creative with your shift patterns. It could be as straightforward as letting someone start and finish their day 15 minutes earlier. And there will occasionally be bits of resistance. One of the things we hear is, well, how will we know what people are doing? You'll know exactly the same way that you currently know. You'll be able to judge the results, judge people on what they're doing, not where they're sitting or standing. And what about the floodgates? We'll open the floodgates to everyone. Open them. People are drowning behind these floodgates. Open them, let the water, but the money flow. Because ultimately, this chicken, and the caged chickens produce very different eggs. Uh, <laughs> the 
Orange yolk there <laughs> has more vitamins, it tastes nicer, it has less fat, it has less cholesterol. And the other one is a pasty sludge that's been forced out under duress. <laughs> but when you transfer that idea to people, because they're more productive for every minute that they work for you, because they stay with you for longer and you don't have all the costs of replacing them more often, you get the good egg, but at a lower cost. So if you get flexible working, however it comes about, whatever your needs are, whoever you are, and this is not about mothers, this is not about fathers, this is not about parents, this is about people. People with anxiety, people with mental health issues, people with caring responsibilities, people who are living with disabilities, people who want to live. If you get flexible working, own it, leave that coop, that cage, that office, loudly. Like the guy that said to us last week, I leave loudly because I want my daughter to remember my face at the school gates. Or the woman who said to us recently that she leaves loudly every Tuesday because her father's living with Alzheimer's and she likes to go around to his house and bake him a pie for his dinner. Or the young guy, the young graduate who said, I leave loudly because I want to become engaged to, not disengaged from, my girlfriend. And so this is us and our chicken leaving loudly. Thank you. <laughs>